We sometimes have provided MacBooks as playback devices at events. They provide a great way to run uh, your outdoor movie or presentation. However, these are often not show ready. I'll show you how to adjust settings to maximize your success at your event. Hi, I'm Paul the Outdoor Movie Guy and I own and run an outdoor movie company. I've been in the outdoor movie business for more than 10 years now. And before that, I worked in information technology. If you have a question about laptops, Macs, uh, outdoor movies, be sure to put them in the comments below. So we're gonna look at the power settings, sound notifications. We're gonna talk about duplicating displays. Do you wanna duplicate the display or do you want to extend your display? Two different things right there. But first we're gonna look at the actual laptop itself. We're gonna look at the power, uh, what type of MacBook it happens to be, and then the media playback. Are you on a local drive or is it an external drive? How fast is that drive? So first, Let's have a look at the laptop and crack on with that. Here I have my, my MacBook, and if I was gonna use this for a presentation, the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is attach my power. Um, when, when you're running with attached power, this is the same on Mac and PCs, the performance is increased when you, you do have that power on. If you have a high powered video card, that will drain your battery really quick, uh, often, things can go into energy saving modes, which you really don't want when you're doing a presentation. So whenever possible, you want that chart, you want that plugged in, and you also, if possible, have that laptop fully charged as well, just in case it gets knocked out. Uh, next thing we're gonna look at right here is the type of uh, MacBook. I have a uh, MacBook Pro, this is a 2015, it's a few years old, but still very, very good. Does have that its own video card in here so we can get really, really good playback from that. If you do have a MacBook Air, not necessarily the best playback device, but some of these things will help you with that. But if possible, uh, the MacBook Pros do have a better video card uh, in them, so that will help with the presentation. Got this because it does have the HDMI port, so uh, make sure that you do have a known good adapter uh, if you don't have something like this one that does have the HDMI integrated. If you need the USB-C to HDMI connector, make sure you have that. And I would recommend having a backup as well. Uh, if you've got the mini display ports, which look like this, if you have those, again, make sure that you do have the correct adapter. Some adapters, if they go from the mini display port to the um, VGA, they may not, carry uh, copy protected content. So you normally wanna make sure that's going to HDMI to make to maximize playback ability. Whenever possible, I like to run my media from the local drive. If you do need to use an external drive due to the size of the media or disk space, things like that, um, definitely make sure it's a faster USB drive. Some big old drives like this, um, they are spinning drives. They could be 5,400 speed drives. They may not be best for media playback. They may not have the faster connection. So whenever possible, make sure it is a faster drive. Um, may maybe a flash drive. Not all flash drives are, are built the same, but make sure it's a good flash drive and definitely test any media playback. Very, very strongly re recommend do not stream content at a live event. I'll say that one more time. Do not stream content when you add a live event. If you're trying to play a, a movie or a presentation or that may be on Google Slides or something like that, get it local. So if your connection goes down, it still plays back. Another consideration with that is if you're trying to connect via Wi-Fi to play something and you have a group of uh, teenagers or whoever and they're all on that same network, your playback may be seriously degraded and you don't wanna be relying on a connection like that for something that's mission critical. So whenever possible, get that media local to do the playback. First thing we're gonna look at is power settings. Apple menu, system preferences. And if I click on the little battery right here, this will take me to my, my battery info. I'm not too worried about battery info, but I do wanna to go to the power adapter itself. Um, all the settings, put hardware, hard drive to sleep, enable power nap and automatic graphic switch. And we're gonna turn that stuff off. The other thing we want to turn off 
is definitely the display off after however long. We want that to be never when we're doing a presentation and we're plugged in like this. Uh, we don't want to suddenly have to, uh, maybe we're using an HDMI switcher and we switch to the Mac and it, it goes to it goes to sleep or the display's off. So turn all of that stuff off, make sure it's plugged in. They're gonna be your main settings right there. So we need to make sure those sound notifications and pop-up notifications are turned off when you're doing a presentation or you're showing a movie. To my system preferences again, my notification and focus is right here. However, if I go here and you're not sure where it is, if you start typing notification, it'll pop right up and it's a great way to open it really simple. So I could go through each one of these and turn the notifications off. That is a hassle, you don't wanna do that. So instead, if we go to focus, and the do not disturb, we turn do not disturb on, that's really gonna help you. However, if you've gone and set up favorites, they may still come through. So if I go into my options and I uh, allow calls from and I turn that off, right now you're not gonna get those pop-ups, you're not gonna get those sound notifications. If you've ever watched a presentation and uh, the laptop has gone into screensaver mode, that's a huge frustration. So let's make sure we are turning that screensaver off and we'll do that right now. And then I'm gonna show you a little pro tip for something else as well. Apple menu, system prefer preferences, desktop and screensaver right there. Okay, first thing I wanna do is go to my screensaver. And um, if this is checked, definitely uh, you can uncheck it. There's no option here for never again, so just make sure that you uncheck that. So here we have the pro tip. Um, if you're doing a presentation and an app happens to, to crash, um, if it then goes to showing your desktop, that can look uh, a little unprofessional, a little embarrassing. So if you're, one way to get around that is your desktop background, say maybe you're working a film festival or something like that, you can put that logo from the film festival up at that point. And I'm gonna quickly show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go to my desktop right here. And then I'm gonna go look for my logo that I want to show. It just happens to be on my USB pre-show and this is the logo. So that is my background. So maybe I was showing a presentation or something and then uh, it happened to crash. What you're seeing right now is what would pop up. This is just a, a screen that we use for um, doing simple keystoning on projectors, but yours could be more related to your business or whatever it happened to be. So I'm actually gonna change that back because that's white and really bright. And we're just gonna go back to the previous one, but that's just a little pro tip. Let's talk about displays. What we've seen so far is a duplicated display. What I see on my laptop, my MacBook screen is the same as my uh, capture card or projector or whatever that would happen to be. So they're exactly the same right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to extend. So what I see on my laptop is different than what is on that projector. Why would I wanna do this? Well, a lot of applications will allow you to have a, a view, presenter view where on your laptop, you can see notes, you can see what's coming up next, all of that info. And then on the screen itself, is, is the actual live show. PowerPoint uses this, Keynote uses this. If you're using uh, some great software like ProPresenter, that uses that. That'll allow you to key up all the videos in a line and you're not having to open up each video ind individually. And when you hit play, it plays on that external, uh, that external monitor. So what we're gonna do right now is make that change. System preferences. I'm gonna look for display, uh, it's in here somewhere, there it is. And again, I can always type in my search bar to bring it up a little bit quicker. I'm gonna go into my display settings, perfect. And what I want is um, my MacBook Pro, I want that to be the primary. And then the USB capture, I want to be my second secondary. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the mirroring Built-in display is my main display and my USB capture, which would be the projector or whatever it happens to be, is gonna be my extended display. So I've gone ahead and made that change, but if we look at the top right here, 
I still have that menu bar. There's one final step you need to do to get rid of the menu bar at the top. And we're gonna make that change right now and it does require a logout. I'm gonna go to System Preferences and I'm gonna go to Mission Control. And I'm looking at a monitor over here, so please bear with me. Displays have separate spaces. If I check that and close it, now to, to enable that setting I just made, I need to log out. So I'm gonna to go to the menu. I'm gonna log myself out. Logging back in. Now you'll notice at the top of the screen over here, I have no menu bar. So on my, on my laptop right here, I have the menu bar and let me just do a quick overhead so you can see that. See on my primary display, I have the menu bar and I'll click back over here and there's no menu bar on that secondary display. How would this help me doing a presentation? I'm gonna open up ProPresenter, that's uh, software that's often used for presentation. Here we are in ProPresenter and right here is kind of the background to ProPresenter. I have my, my presentation built right here and it's going through every seven seconds changing it. This is actually my output display. And if I click over to that secondary screen right now and merge it, that is what we're seeing. And again, in a, in a few seconds, actually, if I just tap, it'll go to the next the next item that I have in that presentation. And if I click back over and merge it back, then again, you're gonna see that there's the two screens. So this app, just like PowerPoint, just like Keynote, allows you to set up that second screen and just allows for a much smoother uh, playback. So definitely um, look at when you're doing things like that, setting up that uh, monitor as a uh, a second monitor. I think that's about it. Um, I did not cover sound in this video. I do have another video about uh, Mac sound. So if you do have sound questions, uh, look up right here and you should see a little link to a video on that. That's Mac sounds. I do have a PC one as well. I will make a PC version uh, of this presentation too. So if you are a PC person or you're dealing with a PC, we can definitely help you with that. That's about it for right now. Like, subscribe, give us some love. If you do have any questions, be sure to shoot them in the comments below and uh, have a great one. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Bye.